Hey, Math 30-2s. Today we're going to look at solving problems involving rational equations. Let's start with modeling a problem. Gary bought a package of absolute value golf shirts for $648. He kept one for himself, gave one to his wife, and gave one to each of his four children. He sold the remaining golf shirts for a total of $900. If there are X golf shirts in the package, write an expression for the number of golf shirts that he sold. All right. So he kept one for himself, one for his wife, and gave one to each of his four children. So there are X in there, but he kept one plus his wife and four children is six. So X minus six would be the number he sold. Write an expression for the amount that he paid for each golf shirt. Well, he bought all the golf shirts for $648, and there were X of them, so 648 divided by X. Write an expression for the selling price of each golf shirt. Well, he sold the remaining golf shirts for $900, so he had $900, and he sold X minus 6 of them. All right. Part D, write an expression for the profit he makes from one shirt. Well, this is how much he sold one shirt for, 900 times x minus 6. And this is what he paid for each shirt, 648 divided by x. So if I subtract those, I should have the profit he makes from one shirt. E, if he made a profit of $12 on every golf shirt he sold, Write an equation that could be solved to determine the number of golf shirts in the package. Well, so this is the profit. We just wrote that from above. Price he sold each one for and price he paid for each one. And then it says he made a $12 profit on each shirt, so that's got to equal 12 bucks. F, show that the equation in Part E <coughs> can be written in quadratic form as such. And solve that equation to find out the number of golf shirts in the package or solve that equation for x. All right, so given this equation up above, I want to multiply the whole equation by the common denominator. So my common denominator is x times x minus 6. So I'm going to multiply every term in that equation by x times x minus 6. So I would have x times x minus 6 times 900 all divided by x minus 6. Subtract x times x minus 6 times 648, all divided by x, should equal 12 times x times x minus 6. And we can now see that I can reduce the x minus 6 in this expression, and I'm left with x times 900, or 900x. Over here, I can reduce the x's in this expression, and I am left with negative 648 times x minus 6. All right, we're subtracting that numerator. And here I have 12x times x minus 6. So I no longer have any denominators, and I can expand out the brackets and collect like terms, and we should get a quadratic equation that we can solve. So 900x minus 648x minus negative is like a positive. 648 times 6, 3888 should equal 12x squared minus 72x. Beautiful. Now let's set that equation equal to 0. So 0 should equal... 12x squared. I've got this negative 648x, so I'm going to add 648x to both sides. So 648x minus 72x is minus 324. Oop. Uh, no, what is that? Uh, Well, and we also have to minus 900x from both sides. All right, so 900 minus 648 is 252, and then you 
add 252 to that side, so you're going to subtract 252 from minus 72. So you should get negative 324 x's. And then let's minus a 388 from both sides, or 3888. So I now have a quadratic equation. It's not in lowest terms, but I notice I could probably divide every term here by 12. So if I divide both sides of this equation by 12, and divide every term by 12, 0 divided by 12 is still 0. Here I get 1x squared, negative 324x divided by 12 is minus 27x, and negative 3888 divided by 12 is a minus 324. Hey, that's the equation we were supposed to get. Very nice. Now we're asked to solve that. Well, we could go ahead and factor this. So if I factor this, I come up with the factors. What two numbers add to negative 27, multiply to negative 324. Those numbers are minus 36 and positive 9. Therefore, x should equal 36, or x should equal negative 9. Now this one doesn't make any sense. You can't have negative 9 t-shirts in the context of this question. So we would say that there were 36 golf t-shirts in the package. So that's our best answer. All right. So answer the question. There were 36 golf t-shirts. in the original package. Okay. Excellent. Let's look at the next page. A couple guidelines for solving problems then. One, make sure you read the problem carefully and understand what's being asked. Two, introduce a variable to represent an unknown quantity. Usually the quantity that's being asked for is the best one to use for a variable for. Write an algebraic equation, in this case a rational equation, to represent the given information. Go ahead and solve that equation and then state the solution of the problem. Make sure it's a reasonable answer. No problems involving distance, speed, and time. We've seen this before. Distance equals speed times time. Right? Distance equals speed multiplied by time. If I want to solve this equation for speed, well, that would be distance divided by time. If I want to solve the equation for time, well, that would be distance divided by speed. So basically, this triangle tells us the equations uh, when we're dealing with distance, speed, time problems. Keeping that in mind, let's do example one. Competing in an endurance race, Shannon cycled for 120 kilometers and then swam for 12. Her average cycling speed was eight times faster than her average swimming speed. Shannon took nine hours to complete the race. So if her average swimming speed is s kilometers per hour, write an expression for average cycling speed. Well, it says that her average cycling speed was eight times faster than her average swimming speed. So that should be 8s. All right. And that's in kilometers per hour. So I guess we could write that kilometers per hour. Use the above information to complete the first two columns in the table to the right. So we, told, we were told that Shannon cycled for 120 kilometers. So the distance she cycles is 120 kilometers. And that she swam for 12 kilometers. So that's the first column. The second column, we're saying her average swimming speed is S. That's in there. So her average cycle speed should be 8 times that, 8S. Now, once you get the first two columns in this chart filled out, we're going to use that distance speed time, the distance speed time equations from up above to fill in the third column. All right. So remember, time from up above is equal to distance over speed. So the time she cycled, well, it's a distance of 120 over a speed of 8s. All right. 
the distance she swam divided by the speed she swam should equal the time. So that's going to be 12 over s. Part D says write an equation using the expressions in the third column that shows it took Shannon nine hours to complete the race. So this is the time column. If it took her nine hours to complete the race, the time it took her to cycle, 120 over 8s, plus the time it took her to swim, 12 over s, should equal nine hours. All right. Now that equation we could simplify a bit because 120 divided by 8, they're both divisible by 8. So 120 divided by 8 is 15, and 8s divided by 8 is just s. So 15 over s plus 12 over s should equal 9. All right, so that's the equation in simplest form. The top of the next page says solve this equation to calculate her average swimming speed. All right, so 15 over s plus 12 over s should equal 9. Well, if they we're going to add fractions if they have the same common denominator already. We just have to go 15 plus 12, so 27 over s is equal to 9. And if we multiply both sides by s, you get 27 is going to equal 9s. Now divide both sides by 9. So 3 is s. So we would say her average swimming speed is s or 3 kilometers per hour. What would her average uh, cycling speed be? Well, 8 times that, so 24 kilometers an hour. question didn't ask us that, but we could figure that out if it would ask us that. Example 2. St. Andre Students Council is traveling from Knoxtown to Harperville for the Students Council National Conference. Based on the travel budget allowed for the trip, the St. Andre Students Council has two options they can leave tonight by bus, so they can save three hours by leaving tomorrow morning and using the express train. The express train travels 25 kilometers per hour faster than the bus. The distance between Knoxtown and Harperville is 1,500 kilometers. Use the information above to complete the table. Well, the distance from Knoxtown to Harperville is 1,500 kilometers. Doesn't matter if we're going by bus or if we're going by train. It's still 1,500 kilometers. We're going to say that the speed of the bus is S. So we're told that the speed of the express train is 25 kilometers per hour faster than the bus. So this should be 25 plus S. I've got two columns filled in. Use those two columns to figure out the third column. So again, time will equal distance divided by speed. So the time the bus would take is going to be a distance of 1,500 divided by a speed of s. The time the train would take would be a distance of 1,500 divided by 25 plus s. Part B says determine the average speed of the express train and calculate how long it would take to travel between Knoxtown and Harperville by express train. All right. So we have to come up with an equation. Um, what are we told up above about the time? We're told they can save three hours by leaving tomorrow morning. So what that tells us is if they leave by bus, the bus time minus the train time should be three hours difference. Right. If they take the bus, it takes three hours longer. If they take the train, it takes three hours less. So if they took the bus, maybe the bus was 10 hours, the train would only be seven hours. So 10 minus seven will give us three hours. So if you use real numbers, you can make sure that the equation makes sense. All right, so our bus time, based on the third column, is 1,500 over S minus the train time, again, from the third column is 1,500 over 25 plus s, and that should equal 3 hours. We just have to go ahead and solve this equation now. All right, so 
solving a rational equation. We want to get rid of that denominator, so we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by s times 25 plus s. Make sure every term gets multiplied by that. So in the first equation, the s's will cancel, and we're left with 1,500 times 25 plus s. Subtract in the second equation, the 25 plus s's will cancel. We're left with 1,500 times s. And we've got 3 times s times 25 plus s. Because 3 is a denominator 1, so there's nothing that's going to reduce. Okay, so expand this out and solve the equation. 1,500 times 25, oh, what is that, 3750? 3750, 500 plus 1,500s minus 1,500s should equal 3s times 25 is 75s plus 3s squared. All right. So here, 1,500s minus 1,500s, uh, those are gone. If I set the equation equal to 0, I get uh, 3s squared plus 75s, and you're going to minus this number from both sides, minus 37,500. And again, I can divide every term here by 3. So do you, 0 divided by 3, sorry, 0 divided by 3 is 0. 3s squared divided by 3 is 1s squared. 75s divided by 3 is 25s. And 37,500 divided by 3 is 12,500. All right, now factor that. So I'm going to solve this equation by factoring. There's only one way to get s squared. That's s times s. What's the numbers? Add to 25 and multiply to negative 12,500. Well, it's positive 125 and minus 100. And there we go. So now, s could equal negative 125 or s could equal positive 100. And again, if we're talking about speed, negative speed doesn't make sense. So that's the only speed that makes sense for this question. So if you go back to the start of the question, we defined S as the speed of the bus. So the bus went 100 kilometers per hour and the train then must have went 125 kilometers per hour. So, turn the average speed of the express train. Great, we just did that. And it also asks us to figure out how long it would take to travel between Knoxtown and Harperville. So, time, remember, time equals distance, 1500, divided by speed, 125. So the time it would have taken to travel between those two places should have been 12 hours by train, by express train. All right? Excellent. You guys have your assignment. Where you go.